bonjour, je crois qu'on est en direct. Je suis ici avec Sigrun, ma coach, que je voudrais bien vous présenter. Et ce Facebook Live va être en anglais, évidemment. Hello Sigrun, I, welcome to my Facebook page. I'm so happy to have you here. I really feel honored. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Oh, I, it's so so nice that you just stuck here. I wanted to, I watched yesterday your webinar. This was so fantastic. And it's happening today again at 10 o'clock. And I really recommended it to everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's incredible. I already saw something like this in January and it was so, it's so good. I need to see it again. Um, so what I wanted to ask you, um, as I have been working with you since January, Would there be a special advice that you could give to dancers, yoga teachers, and why would um, what could you do for them with uh, your uh, Samba program? Well, I think first, before we talk about the program, is to understand uh, if people are really serious about building a profitable business. A lot of dancers, yoga teachers, uh, let's say these softer uh, professions um, guard this as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to go and do it full time and have it support your living, uh, you have to think about it differently. You have to think about it as a business. It is not just having fun teaching or doing it yourself because often you become a teacher because you love doing it yourself. Becoming a teacher is another thing It's different from doing it yourself, but a business owner is another step up. And I feel there is often a disconnect between the enjoyment of the teaching and thinking like a business owner. And these are two different things. So we go to school to learn to do something well, let's say in this case, a dancer or a dancing teacher. And another thing, you go to school and learn how to run it as a business. And unfortunately, a lot of people never take that second step and learn to be a real business owner. You have to think about what you charge, what you do very differently. And uh, so that, that's, the, that's the two things I say right away. So whether it's Sompa or any other program, learning to be a business owner is a, is a skill. Anybody can learn it, uh, but it requires a mindset shift from mm -hmm. going oh, I'm just teaching this and maybe I get a few hours there and, 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 and yes, I'm happy. But if you have to have a full-time job next to your passion, then you're not really living your dream. And that's what I would say as a start. So before you can even consider, oh, do I join this program or that program? Are you ready to think like a business owner? Do you want to take this passion seriously? Do you want to turn your passion into a profitable business? If that's a yes, if that's a clear yes, then we can start to talk about how do you do that? Um, and I think this can be a path for some people, several months, several years, or even decades, where they come to this point of saying, I'm not going to do this as a hobby anymore. I really want to go full force. And then they doubt it. Can I really live from this? Yes. And I say you can, and that's why we bring up examples uh, of other people who have done it before, whether they're inside Samba or outside Samba. If you see someone living from your passion, whether it's dancing or yoga or anything like else, if you just find one example that at least, then you can say to yourself, if she can do it, I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I want everyone to practice that. So we can repeat that again and again. If she can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it doesn't necessarily help to have, I would say you have to have two role models. Uh, Oprah is obviously one role model for me, but she is so far away. She's been doing this business for so long and I'm not willing to be a talk show host for 30 years and do three shows a day, <laughs> but I'm willing to do the work. So you have to be willing to do the work but it's helpful to find a role model closer. Finding someone who is only three years, four years, possibly even five years away from you. And you feel like, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, this is the right way to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's where a lot of people get stuck already there. 
if you do not believe you can do it, you will not be able to do it. Mm -hmm. So then there's no point investing in any program. First, you have to believe you can do it. Mm -hmm. And I believe anything is possible. And we have so many examples inside the Somba program of, uh, I was getting these questions yesterday and just this morning, uh, one of my friends asked, oh, are there any teachers in Somba? And I'm like, yes. And it, as it happens, uh, my sister is a teacher. She's inside the Somba program and she has a six figure business teaching math online. Yeah, it's a, and it seems incredible, but when one sees how it works, then yeah. Yeah, and see teaching math to teenagers. This is not uh, courses you can charge high prices for because it's the parents paying for the teenager. Yes, they are interested in good education and they're paying for extra. This is like extra classes in the top of the school. But the teacher is very similar to yoga or dancing. It's similar price point in terms of what you would charge for an online course, for instance. So if my sister can do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have like, have yoga teachers. Uh, and you know, yoga online, so obvious to me, I don't wanna go to a studio. I live here in a little village in Switzerland. I travel a lot to Iceland and abroad. It does not make sense to me to be in any kind of a studio or have some kind of a subscription. And Honestly, they are not very attractive studios in my village. Mm. So I would not feel, I would feel like, you know, I'm in my beautiful home office and I come to this crappy studio. I was like, I'd rather just put out a mat in front of my computer, mm -hmm. but with my favorite teacher. Because the next thought that will come up, yeah, but there are already so many doing it. This is the next thing that the list of yeah. has. Yeah. Yeah, clear. <laughs> yeah, so we have we have already said, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. And you start to think, okay, maybe I can do it. And then the next thought is, oh, there are so many doing it already. It's too late. It's too late for me. It is never too many or too late. Think of it this way. Um, there are people who decide to buy one of my programs because they like me. They don't even know what's inside the program. Yeah. 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 This is, yeah, of course. Yeah. We buy from people we know, like, and trust. Now, if I like someone, uh, I will start to follow them. And if they have the right program for me, I will buy from them. And I know there's a sea of, let's say, let's continue with yoga because we know there's already so many offers out there. I have looked at a lot of offers and they don't appeal to me. I don't mm -hmm. like the person. I don't like their voice or, you know, it can be little things, but that's the thing. Everyone is unique and there's going to be that this big group of ideal clients out there that love exactly you and the way you do it. Mm. Just to mention it, uh, I don't really like doing yoga the, the traditional way, like the downward dog and all that stuff. I, oh, it really... <laughs> I, I learned yoga many, many years ago from an Icelandic uh, guy who uh, became a very kind of famous in his niche. But I, I got tired of all this. And also I have problems with my neck. So anything that concerns, you know, the hands, I don't like that. Uh, but what I did, I hired a private yoga teacher for a while. And I just told her, I don't like all that stuff, but we can still do some kind of a yoga. I just exclude those exercises. And it was wonderful. Uh, yeah. 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 A bit is private. Yeah. Yeah. And she is inside Samba. And she has a mixture of, she said, I don't want to be the yoga teacher with the studio. She was teaching in a studio. And this is probably, teaching in a studio is probably the worst paid things you can have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. she said, how can I earn good money with yoga? And I said, okay, private, a few private clients and corporate. Within a few months, she had a few private clients and she had a company where she went there two, three times a week. Now, this was all offline, but mm -hmm. she felt like her dream was coming true because she started from scratch at the age of 55. Ah, uh, yeah. Incredible. Yes. She went from selling a business she didn't love anymore 
and starting this from scratch. And within a few months, she was up and going. She charged half price first for the private clients. And then when she went, I told her 50%, 75% and 100%. They all stayed with her. Nobody dropped off. They continued. Yeah, this is great. But I think once you need it, you, you, you love a teacher, you love the teacher and you work with the teacher because you know it's worth it. Yeah, And once you decide that you're going to be a business owner, you're not going to treat it as a hobby, yeah. you'll figure out a way. So this is just how she started. Um, and then I told her, you have to do an online course. And she was, you know, uh, procrastinating a little bit on it. And I pushed a little bit and she just did it the way uh, we have seen happening this summer in uh, Inside Samba. Uh, started a Facebook group, uh, put out a post, no Facebook ads, nothing. She had 12 or 16 participants right away for a four week yoga course happening inside the Facebook group. Oh, great, yes. Yeah. So that, and, and, and see, and the, the, the thing was, she was already 55. I think she's now, this is two years ago, 57 starting a new business very courageous right and also yoga which is physical activity and everybody will think oh you have to be young and beautiful and slim and da, da, da. no the the appeal was her story mm -hmm. she had been a busy business owner herself she didn't love her job anymore so she started to get stressed about it mm -hmm. and so she could talk exactly to people who were a bit stressed or entrepreneurs under pressure and people just flock to her. They didn't want that young girl that has no business experience hopping around on TV. No, they wanted the experienced woman who had a story that could relate to you and could, it's, it's because it's so much about mindset. And you know what she figured out? She figured out herself, this is not actually about yoga. It is about them actually, it's, it's actually about them investing 10 minutes or 30 minutes a day into their health. That's what I'm trying to get them to do. I said, yes, it's mm. all in the end about mindset. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, especially, yeah. Especially if you're teaching to the public, if you're teaching to passionate, enthusiastic people, it's a different animal. But as soon as you want to scale and teach to the general public, it is about the mindset of them actually taking action. Yeah. which we all know is, is in business and in any other thing. Yeah. So people, it is never too many and it's never too late. And we have all these wonderful examples. Now, then it comes to, you need to learn how to be a business owner. You cannot just, uh, you know, say, okay, now I have a few clients, all is going to be good. No, you have to think of these are different pillars in business. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you think of an org chart, if you've ever seen an organizational chart, there is the CEO, there's a CFO, there's a marketing department, there is, uh, you know, let's say research and development department, there is sales, all these things. Mm -hmm. If you look at a big corporation, well, basically an entrepreneur and business owner is all of these things. Yes. And, and uh, when you really want to run a, a profitable, sustainable business, business that lasts long, that doesn't go belly up, uh, that kind of lasts for several years, provides you with good income. You need to look at all of these things. And it can be fun. You know, it's fun, especially when you are in a community and you learn it through a way of like, hey, this is how I do it. And at some point you are ready to outsource and get some help. But in the beginning, you have to do it your own and you have to understand how you run a profitable business. The biggest problem with most, most businesses is they run out of cash, right? And you right. have to learn how to manage that. Yeah. You have to learn not to uh, only, only invest in things that have a return on investment. And I say investments and not cost. So when there's a program that where you know you can learn how to uh, you know, run your business, that's an investment. It's not a cost, right? Yes, so there's right. a difference between cost and investment. Yeah. So you have to think about, let's say, marketing. Uh, the danger I see with freelancers. Uh, you know, people who trade hours for dollars, like you get paid per hour for, let's say, a private yoga client, or you go into a studio and you get paid per hour, um, is that they fill all the hours with, with this work. Yeah. So there's nothing left to do admin, to do marketing, 
to get new clients, to do, uh, even if you're not doing the accounting yourself, you have to, you're the boss, you're the CFO. Yes. So you have to know how it's done. You have to follow up. You have to make their pictures of your receipts and filing and everything. So there's nothing left for all of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Because you fill up the time. And this is a problem a lot of freelancers do or people who are working by the hour. They're independent, but they're not business owners. Yeah, yeah, this is very clear. Yeah, so clear. you're independent. Let's say you are your own boss and you can say yes and no to all these projects, but you're not a business owner until you fully grasp that you're running a company and you have to have time in the weekdays, not on the weekends and evenings, <laughs> uh, in the week to do admin, marketing, sales, accounting, and all those things. And it is fun when you know how to do it. I know it's a struggle when you don't know how and you scramble to figure it out. Then it becomes a stressful thing. And that's why you need to learn how to be a business owner. You need to learn these things. And when you, you know it yourself, when we know something, when we start to feel we're good at it, it's fun. When we are trying to do something we're not good at and we don't understand it, we get frustrated and unhappy with ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's so important. So I say all these professions can have a profitable, sustainable online business, but you have to learn to be a business owner and you have to figure out a way how you can balance the work part mm -hmm. where you actually go and teach versus that part of the marketing. Yeah, it's, it's very right what you say. I also feel because I work with you, I have been working with you since January that it's like for finances or whatever, you have uh, Facebook ads. And so it's like, ah, <laughs> but yeah. you have a way to teach that it feels so light and, and as you say, fun because yeah. you know what you do. And I think I would really recommend that somebody uh, like a dance teacher, yoga teacher, as we are like sort of artists yeah. that we really need help because we don't like it normally. We like just moving and it must be there. Otherwise there is no business, as you say. I, I saw this with myself. So it's yeah. really fun to work with you because you just so much know how it works. Yeah. Yeah. So I suggest that everyone who's watching this, they can come and join our masterclass. I, I bet you'll put the link just about yes. this video. Uh, we have a masterclass coming up right now after this video. And also we have a couple of uh, extra masterclasses because they're so high demand. So even if you're watching this video, uh, let's say one day or two days after recording, we might have another masterclass. So I highly recommend they come and see me in action, teaching, showing you inside my uh, business. Yeah. Uh, I show you, I took screenshots of my accounting system to show you what's possible. And uh, we'll talk more about at the masterclass also how this is possible for anyone else. Yes, and we yeah. both also have a webinar on Monday. So there is plenty of, uh, of possibility to see you and work with you and see how you work. So it's great. Thank you very much, Thank Sigrun. You. Yes. It was so lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.